Hey everyone, let's talk about blepharitis, right? Blepharitis, eyelids, itis, inflammation. So blepharitis is basically the inflammation of the eyelids. And it's not a condition which, which is, it is in itself a disease, but it is a byproduct of other stuff. For example, you could, someone could punch you in the eye and that'll cause the eyelids to get inflamed. So technically you'll have blepharitis, right? So inflammation of the eyelids, right? That is called blepharitis and it can be because of many conditions. Now there are two types of uh, anterior, uh, uh, there are two types of blepharitis. There is the anterior blepharitis and there is the posterior blepharitis. To understand this uh, and make it easy for us, let's let's remind ourselves of the structure of the eyelid. Uh, I've drawn this uh, diagram several times, but bear with me. This is let's assume this is the upper eyelid, right? And uh, I've drawn this diagram in, in, in the previous videos. If you, uh, I'm sure you'll understand. Uh, here we have the eyelashes coming out of it. This is a side view, and. Over here we have the tarsal plate and with the tarsal plate we have the associated meibomian glands, right? So let's change, change color for a second. Uh, over here we have um, we have the uh, glands of Zeiss and glands of Mole, right? And also these hair, uh, these eyelashes do have their own follicles, right? Because they're hair of course and hairs have follicles, right? Let's draw the little follicles here. So. That said, the, the, the difference between anterior and posterior blepharitis is, well, if it is occurring towards the anterior side, uh, and it is involving the glands of Zeiss, glands of Mole, and hair follicles, that's anterior blepharitis, right? And if it's involving the posterior uh, area, uh, which includes mainly the, the most more significant structure, the meibomian gland, right? That is called posterior blepharitis, or it is also even called meibomianitis, just to be easy, just to make it easy. So anterior blepharitis, it's problem with these three things, uh, hair follicle, glands of size, glands of mole. Posterior blepharitis, a problem with the meibomian gland, right? Let's talk about uh, okay, let's, let me explain uh, the two. Okay, the, the anterior blepharitis actually divided into two types. There's the non, there's the infective type, right? And there is the non-infective type. We'll come to its names later, right? Infective and non-infective type. So infective, uh, that kind of gives you an idea that there is infection, there is a, there is some microorganism which is infective, uh, which is infecting either the glands of Zeiss or mole or the hair follicle, right? So if 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 there is the, if there is an infection of these glands, uh, and that is called an infective blepharitis. That'll result in infective blepharitis, and usually because it's done by Staph aureus, so that is called that is also given the name Staphylococcal blepharitis, right? And then there is the seborrheic blepharitis as well, right? Which is also very similar, as we will see in the in the next slide. So here is is a is a, is a uh, comparison of the two anterior blepharitis types, right? Anterior because it's in the anterior part of the eyelid. So, cause of staphylococcal blepharitis is staphylococcal infection, simple st uh, staph aureus, and even there, uh, there's there are uh, there is also possibility of a staph epidermitis infection as well. So, staph infections and seborrheic blepharitis and the cause is unknown and it could be multifactorial it could be it could be uh, de dependent on many factors right symptoms include uh, symptoms of blepharitis uh, include irritation lacrimation and loss of lashes right and uh, it seems the case with seborrheic right they're actually you'll see that they're actually very very similar right and and then you you have a sight where does this occur it, it occurs in the anterior portion of the island so it'll infect the lash follicles and associated glands and seborrheic is also an, uh, anterior it'll affect the same it's the same places examination finding trichiasis so we'll, we'll study trichiasis in, in the next slide, but uh, in the next uh, videos. But here's a little uh, 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 heads up. So we have this eyelid, right? And it has these uh, eyelashes uh, in, in a good order pointing towards the outsider. Here's our eyeball. Okay, that's not a good looking diagram. But anyways, so let's assume. So there's this fa faulty eyelash, which is instead of pointing outward, it's pointing towards the inside. And it is rubbing against the cornea, uh, uh, the cornea, the conjunctiva, right? And it is causing irritation. So this kind of uh, condition is called trichiasis. So it's a phallococcal uh, blepharitis condition, uh, and so when there's the, and when, the uh, when the eyelid is inflamed, you might find some of the hairs twisting towards the inside, right? So you might find trichiasis. You'll definitely find redness, edema. 
Colorets. Here's a new word. So colorets basically, um, um, let's let's uh, draw it a little bit. So the word colorate, it, it should remind you of colors, right? And it is exactly like that. So here we have, let's, let's assume this is, uh, we're drawing the histology of an eyelash, right? Because it's a hair, it has the same histology, right? Almost. Here's the skin, and out of the skin we have this uh, little eyelash, this little hair pointing out, okay? And this uh, follicle is giving its nutrition. So let's assume that for certain, for some reason, there's this deposition because there are glands involved in this and there's there might be a little bit of pus production what happens is that this hair follicle this is all this also gets involved and there's this deposition of pus and crusty material dry scaly material right and this kind of covers this whole hair the base of this hair right it kind of gives this hair a color, if you if you might say that, right? So colorette is this 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 thing, this this uh, scaly, uh, hard, crusty thing which forms around the base of the hair. So you'll find that in infections of uh, 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 by you'll find that in blepharitis you might find um, colorettes, right, forming around uh, the hairs, right? And there's another new word, telangiectasia, right? And telangiectasia, as you understand, uh, it's basically a spider web appearance of, of capillaries under the skin. You might have seen it in, in old people, right? I've seen it in, in, in quite a lot of old people because they have thinner skin. That, For example, this is the hand of someone old, right? Okay. Five. Okay. This is the hand of someone old. You might see it on its surface that there are, uh, there are these, uh, right? you might see some blood vessels and, and, and there are they just they just spread out like a spider web, right? This condition is called telangiectasia, right? And you might see telangiectasia in the eye, right? We're talking about eye, not the arm, right here. So you'll find telangiectasia inside uh, the uh, inside the eye, in, in, inside the eye, right? right? Oh, specifically on the sclera, and you will also find ulceration of eyelids and of cornea because, of course, it's inflammation, and. Uh, the same same kind of symptoms you'll find in seboric uh, dermatitis, uh, sorry, not dermatitis, in seboric blepharitis as well. You will see that there are similar symptoms, but they're less severe, right? And they're more oily and greasy instead. Here we found colorets, where there were dry, flaky, there's dry, flaky stuff, right? Uh, like, like, like a, like a like crumbs of bread okay and over here it's 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 different it's oily it's not dry and it's greasy and it's a little bit of scale right it's it's scaly and greasy and oily as i mentioned before and uh, inward uh, bending of the eyelids we got ptosis drooping of the eyelids conjunctivitis the inflammation of conjunctiva and tear film instability right so the tear will not stay on the eye and it will break Right, we'll study about that in a later disease, and it, it, then in seboric, uh, seboric blepharitis also has similar symptoms. Now that we are done with the anterior, uh, the anterior blepharitis, let's come towards the posterior blepharitis, right? And we know that uh, that posterior blepharitis because they're the, they're the only important gland behind or the, on the posterior side of the of the eyelid that is the meibomian gland so posterior blepharitis usually or is actually refers to uh, meibominitis right so meibominitis is the inflammation of the meibomian glands and it is characterized by abnormal and altered secretion of meibom right so what is meibom actually meibom as you can probably guess uh, meibom is the substance that is secreted by the meibomian gland right meibomian gland secretes meibom and it is a it is a it is a thick it is a thick uh, fluid which is full of lipids right it is lipid rich and this meibom plays an important role in preserving the tear film so let's let's talk about this tear film for a second if you all didn't know please skip forward uh, Let's let's talk about it uh, for a second. So so we know that here we have the eye right, and uh, we have these uh, eyelids right, and eyelashes. A few eyelashes here. We have the um, we have the meibomian gland here. Let's draw the, that roughly, and uh, we we know that there is also this conjunctiva right. 
which 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 covers this whole place, right? Uh, so from basic anatomy, we we know that there is this gland over here called the uh, called the lacrimal gland, right? And this lacrimal gland is actually the main producer of tears, lacrimation. It is done by the lacrimal gland, right? So it uh, deposits all its uh, secretions here, which is usually watery, and and as a result, they 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 kind of cover the whole surface of this conjunctiva. They cover the whole surface of the eye, right? And and that is very necessary because if this place were dry, it'll cause a lot of itching, it'll cause a lot of irritation, right? And it'll cause uh, a lot of problems. So what happens is that uh, lacrimal glands, they work uh, day and night and they produce uh, this watery secretion. But the problem with watery secretion is that it tends to evaporate, right? It tends to evaporate and there are, and also not only that, it also tends to break, right? So there is a chance that somewhere and this, the, this the, okay, let, let me actually draw what I mean. Um, let's set this eraser for a second. Um, okay, here's the film gone. Uh, so I, I was saying that there's a chance that water might s deposit here and then leave a gap here and then might deposit here and then leave a gap and then might deposit here, right? So water does not have this tendency to actually stick to stick with each other, right? It, it is not cohesive as much. So what we do, uh, so what has nature done uh, to solve that problem is that nature has given us um, these uh, tarsal, uh, sorry, the meibomian glands, right? And meibomian glands actually secrete meibom. Meibom is oily, and it does two very important things. First of all, it 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 forces or it kind of mixes with this water, right? And that causes it the the tear film to to kind of be one uniform layer, right? It forms this one uniform tear film. And this tear film is preserved because of this. And the other good thing which happens because of this is, uh, because this is now uh, it's 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 a mixture. It it's its evaporation becomes difficult. So two things it does. It stops. So yeah. So it's two, it does two things. It stops the evaporation and it preserves the tear film. Right. So mebum plays an important role in tear in preserving the tear film. Right. As we just said right now. And if you if you if you have mebuminitis, you cannot secrete mebum, or the, the the amount of mebum you're secreting is different, or the nature of the mebum you're secreting is abnormal. What will happen is you will not have a proper tear film, which will result, of course, in burning. And because mebum, as I said, is full of uh, lipids, it's actually full of fatty acids. Fatty acids, if let's say there is an altered secretion, as I, as I just said here, altered secretion, let's say there is a lot of secretion of mebum, right? What will happen is, because mebum is fatty acid, fatty acids are acids, right? And, well, acids have the tendency to burn. It has, they have the tendency to irritate. So, burning, right? Because they are by themselves, um, um, they are by themselves fatty acids. And signs as a doctor that you will that you will observe will be thicker than usual secretions as, as I said characterized by abnormal secretions of mebum right so thicker than usual right it's a, it's a different kind of mebum which cap the mebumian gland orifices this is very important right they cap the mebumian gland orifice in fact this is one of the things that if you see it you will know right away that it is a case of mebumonaris let me uh, explain what this means and in fact you can if ever you you go to google and you you search or you look up mebumonaris images you'll always see this image right well what you will see is is okay let, let's let's draw it real quick uh, please uh, pull, push the video forward if if, if uh, you're bored of me drawing stuff <laughs> here's the eyelid right tarsal plate, meibomian gland here, right? And this meibomian gland, because its secretion is now very, very thick, it'll have a very hard time, first of all, coming out of here, and then from here to drop, kind of drop onto the eye right here. So, so in fact, instead, it'll just keep on depositing here again uh, with, uh, with the passage of time. And you will see this very thick globule, right? Very thick globule right on the orifice of the right on the hole of the mebumian gland, right? So, which uh, thicker than usual secretions, right? Which cap the mebumian gland orifices, right? 
and chalazions may also occur as a result, and we always know where are chalazions. Treatment, again, hygiene, right? Take proper care of it, and it'll just go away. But if it doesn't, you can use, and remember, these, these drugs are very specific, right? You can, uh, there's a very specific, very standard for amoebominitis. Tetracyclines and macrolides. This is something you should remember, right? You should not just overlook this. So tetracyclines, like tetracycline itself and doxycycline maybe, and macrolides, and they can also be administered for the treatment of amoebominitis. And yeah, that's it for today. Uh, uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you understood something, if you gained something, please, please like, subscribe and share. And yeah, thank you very much.